Good morning. Happy Monday. Let us see where we are at. I made Turkish coffee this morning. Always smokes. There's a reason they normally serve it in like shot glasses. It's strong. Okay then. Woo. Mark chapter 12, starting in verse 35. It says, Jesus answered and said, while he taught in the temple, so now he's asking his own questions because they've been asking him all these questions, trying to trick him. So now he's coming back with his questions. And he said to them in his teaching, beware the scribe. Oh, wait. Yeah. He said to them, beware the scribes who desire to go around in long robes, love greetings in the marketplaces, the best seats in the synagogue, and the best places at the feasts, who devour widows' houses, and for a pretense make long prayers, these will receive greater condemnation. I totally just skipped a section. Ah, well. Now nah, maybe we'll go back. I was like, maybe I can just do that tomorrow. Let's back up. I actually should have started in verse 35, and then I looked up, then I looked down, and I started verse 38. Jesus answered and said while he taught in the temple, how is it the scribes say that the Christ is the son of David? For David himself said by the Holy Spirit, the Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand till I make your enemies your footstool. Therefore David himself calls him Lord. How is he then his son? And the common people heard him gladly. So this is a, a contrast now maybe of these two groups. You see, Jesus is saying things that are contradicting what the Pharisees already had in their minds. And they were set. This is the way it is. But the common people, it seems like they had open minds to hear Jesus and to, to be taught. You know, something that crosses my mind from time to time is that, and maybe this is just natural. I mean, I'm still a man, got my flesh, you know, and... I think there's something very natural that as a pastor and even as church members, you know, we're always excited when a, a, a new family joins the church um, and they're, they're Christians and they know their Bibles. And it's like, wow, what a blessing to have this new family in the church. But quite often, if you receive a group of Christians, well, unless they just moved to town and perhaps were attending a very like-minded church in the other town they lived, you know, and so they moved over and joined you guys, which that's awesome, right? But it's often it's because they left a church. And if they left a church, well, that means they've already been brought up in a church and they've got beliefs and they stick by them sometimes. And, and so sometimes you find like it's exciting for new believers or for believers to be joining, but sometimes we get stuck in our ways and it becomes this thing where, you know, you've got people who they don't want to change their thoughts and the Pharisees, they were pretty stuck in their ways. They, this is the way. And so when Jesus starts talking about this, what he's saying here, right, is that how is they say the scribes of the Christ, the Messiah is going to be the son of David because the Lord said to my Lord, sit right until I make your enemies your footstool. So you see here, David himself calls him Lord. And so now they're trying to think about how can the Messiah be David's son, but David also calls him Lord. And he's implying there that something's going to happen because a father would never call a son Lord. So whoever this Messiah was going to be, you know, there's something unique and special about him. Now, the common people, they were interested and open, but the Pharisees, they didn't like this, 
They're like, oh, what is he? He's just, he's just messing with our heads and our words. And sometimes people have just got it stuck. They believe what they want to believe. And they're not even open to discussing the scriptures. And as he goes further into this group, the scribes, right? And the Pharisees, this, he, he describes a few of the things that they do. He says that they desire to go around in long robes and they love greetings in the marketplaces. They wore very specific clothing that made them stand out. Now, I think Christians in many ways should blend in as far as just being normal people. We shouldn't have a uniform that makes us stand out. Our behavior might make us stand out some. But these guys, you knew who they were. And because of that, they received these greetings in the marketplace. They were revered and honored and they loved the attention. It talks about the best seats in the synagogues and at the feasts. And so they always were excited to get that preferential seating, right? To go and sit at the head of the table next to the master of the banquet and the feast. And so they were always looking for recognition. And here it says, they devour widows' houses. And what many believe what was going on was a widow, right? Or, or even someone who passes away. They come in and as a pretense, they make long prayers. They come in with some spiritual guise, like there's this, this spiritual look to them. But it really is actually them hiding the fact that they're actually going to steal all the stuff from this home. And so the idea is, is that they're making things look spiritual, but it's not. And, you know, we know a lot of that today. You can find it on the TV or on the Internet. You know, pastors and leaders who look real spiritual. And you can tell, though, that they're, they're in it for the money. I mean, it's all about getting money. And so we see these same kind of people today. People who want attention, who want recognition, who are really in the ministry for the sake of popularity. And they are typically, you know, they've got this way of doing things versus the common people. Now, when I said, you know, a family joins the church, I never really finished that thought because it is. Oftentimes people will church hop and they'll bring all their beliefs with them. And oftentimes they won't be happy because this new church, of course, has different teachings. And sometimes you'll find them hopping from church to church to church because no church is good enough. No church has, because they've obviously, they have, they're the ones who have arrived and found perfect theology. And, but the common people heard him gladly. And there's something I love. There's something that's just fresh about new believers. And when our church is getting filled with new believers, you've got people who come glad to hear the word of God. People who are glad to be taught. They're glad to grow. And so it is. It's amazing to watch how the same sermon, you know, you can, some people, they can become, they grow old in their faith. And that's something that all of us have to be cautious of, that, that we we settle what we believe, we've got our way and we're fixed. And then you've got these new believers who are excited and they gladly hear the word of God. They want to be taught. And so, yeah, just contrasting those two groups. We have the scribes here who he is addressing in 35 to 40. And then there in 37, there's that one little mention, but the common people heard him gladly. And so, I would love to see churches getting filled with new believers because obviously we're doing something right, right? If that's happening, then something good is going on if new believers are continually coming. But of course, church is never going to get full of new believers unless all of you old believers are out there trying to make new believers. So that's something the church has to be actively engaged in is reaching the lost so that the church can be filled with these young in the faith people who are growing and want to hear the Lord gladly. So there's a good contrast. 
one more story, and then we move on to the Olivet Discourse. That will be exciting. So I will see you guys bright and early tomorrow morning with the Widow's Two Mites, and then it should be Wednesday. We'll be off to the Olivet Discourse. We'll spend a good handful of days talking about the end times. So it should be good. All right, guys, you guys take care, and I will see you guys tomorrow.